Hey legend, I've been asked a few times lately with how I pack my precious photography gear when flying. So in this video, I'm going to run through what I take on carry-on luggage, how I pack it, and what I send through check luggage. I've done a ton of domestic air travel over the past few months, and this is the bag that I take on carry-on luggage. It's the Timber Axis model, apparently 24 liters, whatever that means, but it's basically fits two camera bodies, six to eight lenses, obviously depending on what lenses you have. So it depends on the job, but I would typically have my 7200 mil attached to one camera, and slot it in there and I would have the other camera with my super wide 15 to 35 mil lens which is a fairly fat lens then I'll slot my 50 mil my 100 mil my fisheye lens away in these compartments I also chuck a few of my speed lights in there I normally take around about four or five of these away with me and most will go into uh, check luggage so this bag then takes care of the lenses and the cameras that are the most important to me at the other end to start my job straight away. So if any of the check luggage ends up lost or on an up plane or whatever, then at least this stuff, I, you know, I can get started with my shoot as soon as I arrive and it's good peace of mind knowing that I have an eye on it the whole time and have it under my own care. Have you seen the way baggage handlers throw your gear around? I tell ya. At Perth Airport Departure Lounge, you get a good view of how unnecessarily rough they are with everyone's bags. Now, this backpack I'm taking on carry-on luggage is pretty much at the limit size of what is allowed. It's 51 centimeters by 32 centimeters by 24 centimeters. The specs for full-size carry-on luggage on most planes are around 56 by 36 by 24 centimeters. If you prefer inches, it's around 22 by 14 by 9 inches. So you want to be getting a backpack that sort of pushes up to what is allowed so you can take more of your valuable gear with you on the plane. However, there is a weight restriction. With most airlines, Virgin, Jetstar, it's only seven kilos and Qantas, it's 10 kilos for one piece and four kilos for a second piece of baggage. So Qantas wins on this by a fair margin. But having said that, I have traveled with all three airlines in Australia recently. Virgin, Jetstar and Qantas and have carried on around about 14 kilos plus each time and never been asked to weigh. I only weigh 68 kilos myself so I figure not too bad to pack a few extra kilos in my bag. Apparently they are doing random checks with carry on luggage at some airports in Australia but it's not something that I've seen really enforced that much but if you do get pulled up you need to have a plan because most likely your checked baggage would have already been sent down the conveyor belt. I wear a jacket with big pockets and if they pull me up, I will just load this jacket up with some of the lenses to bring the weight of my bag down to the required amount. And then you can put them back into the bag once you have satisfied their needs. Easy. And the jacket will come in handy once you're on the plane because you just know they're gonna get carried away with that fridge like air conditioning when you're up in the air. I also have a second piece of luggage which they all allow as long as it will fit underneath the seat that's in front of you so I take on a laptop bag. I definitely prefer to take my computer on carry on luggage. I need that thing to work when I get to my job so I'm not risking that in checked baggage. This old bulky laptop bag allows me to fit extra hard drives, chargers and snacks for the trip because I ain't eating the crap that they serve you up on planes. So that's the carry-on baggage all taken care of. I have all the important lenses, cameras, and laptops safely with me. Now let's look at the photography gear that I check in. So no surprises here first up. The best friend of the traveling photographer is the old Pelican hard case. These guys come in a variety of sizes. I have the 1650 model. This mostly is filled up with my water photography gear. Being a water photographer does add a fair bit more equipment to the mix than a regular photographer. It just comes with the territory. And because it's normally a big part of my shoots, I just need to take all of the bits and pieces. So in here, I have my main body of the housing, the edge housing from Aquatech. 
that is for my Canon R5. I pack two lens ports, a large dome port and a flat port and take two extenders so I can use any of my lenses from 10 mil right up to 200 mil in the water. I pack my flash housing with one of my flashes inside, my pistol grip, uh, all the bits and pieces that attach these things together. By the way, all my water photography gear I have used over the last 20 years has been from a company called Aquatech. If you are interested in their product, I have a 10% discount code below this video, which will save you, um, you know, a few hundred dollars off a water housing setup. And to finish off the Pelican case, I also have a slot for one of my longer lenses to save weight on my carry-on. These cases are so good, so protected, that I'm confident that even the roughest of baggage handlers will not bring harm to my gear. The Pelican cases are waterproof, shockproof, and the foam pullouts mean that everything is kept in place all secure. I trust this setup 100% which is vital because that water housing setup is super important to me once I arrive at my location. Now if my shoot requires a drone I also put through my drone backpack setup into check luggage. I still use the Phantom 4 Pro which is comparatively large compared to the newer Mavics which you could probably just fit in your check-in backpack, but I've stuck with the Phantom 4 Pro because I don't believe that they have improved the still image quality since it was released, but I will be checking out the newer Mavic 3 drone just for the size factor. Anyway, that's an extra piece of baggage that I check in, and if I'm traveling with my wife, my son, or an assistant, I'll get them to take this bag on carry-on luggage to save paying for an extra bag as this bag fits the, fits the requirements of carry-on. If I'm traveling alone and I do check it in, I load this bag up with lots of extra stuff like filters, chargers, a few extra speed lights, uh, just to spread the weight of my other bags into this one, which is generally the lightest. I pack a few t-shirts over the top for a bit of protection and it's ready to roll. Lastly, I have a suitcase for my clothes and other non-related photography stuff. However, in this case, I will also pack my tripods, some reflectors, and anything else that didn't fit in my other three bags. Yes, this does seem a lot, but most of the jobs that I shoot require at least all of this, so I just need to bring it all. Most photographers will be able to fit everything that they need in one check-in bag, and if you can do that, then that is the ideal way of traveling. My advice is to take as much as you possibly can on your carry-on luggage and then have a safe way of packing the rest of your gear for check-in stuff. Thanks for tuning in to this week's video. If you would like to know more about my photography workshops and online courses, then please check out the links below this video and please comment with any questions or suggestions.